uh, this is the first of four sessions on the crisis affecting our church, and those four sessions are in part a piece of a much larger project on the church and the laity, which I'll say a word about in a moment. Um, next semester, we're going to host three more conferences that will deal with the roots of the current crisis and the theological foundations for lay reform and some principles for lay action. Uh, tonight, as Joe said, we're going to hear from four journalists on the media's role in investigating and reporting and framing our understanding of the crisis. I want to say a few words about that. I was in Boston in 2002 when that happened, but 2018 is different from 2002. Um, that time around, I think it was mostly about uh, um, wayward priests, uh, Paul Shanley, John Gagan. Uh, in 2002, I think most Catholics trusted that the bishops would take care of the problem, that we had a lot of stuff to get over, but that we would get past it. Today, I think many Catholics see the bishops themselves as the problem. The, the faithful have lost trust in the bishops. I think this is so for two reasons, and the more important of the two, I think, in terms of the causation, is the revelation that Archbishop McCarrick was himself guilty of some of the sins that parish, some parish priests had committed, and the suspicion that a number of high-ranking church officials uh, must have known about this. Second, of course, was the release of the Pennsylvania Grand Jury Report, which made allegations about bishops in six dioceses across the state over several decades. As a result of these things, as I said, the faithful have lost trust in the bishops. At the moment, they're still the faithful, but faith without trust is not sustainable. Every spring, I teach a class for first-year students in our honors program uh, called The Virtues. Uh, we study the cardinal and the theological virtues, and in our examination of the virtue of faith, the first thing we learn is, as Joseph Pieper says that to believe always means to believe someone and to believe something. Faith arises from a belief in the witness of a credible person. Our own faith is ultimately in Jesus as the ultimately credible person who brings us the gospel. But as Catholics, we also recognize that Christ gave us the church whose visible hierarchy includes the bishops. They're the successors to the apostles who serve the church as an ongoing chain of credible witnesses. And implicit in our faith is our trust in these witnesses. As the Second Vatican Council says in Lumen Gentium, bishops teaching in communion with the Roman pontiff are to be respected by all as witnesses to divine and Catholic truth. The crisis of our time is that so many Catholics have lost respect for the bishops because our trust in them has been broken. So what does this mean for our faith? Each of us is called to be a saint. For each of us, the path to sainthood will include our response to this crisis. This means coming to face to face with whether we have faith in the church or not and what that requires. Today, it means making an act of faith in our clergy as a step towards healing the breach of trust. It doesn't mean thinking that the bishops are doing everything right. We can foster unity by bringing our disagreements to respectful dialogue. It does mean putting our faith in the unity of the church, even when it seems easier to say, I've lost respect for my bishop, but I still have my parish priest. It means putting our faith in the bishop's commitment to reform, even when the process is frustrating and slow. We intentionally scheduled this session that we're having today uh, to follow the USCCB's fall meeting in Baltimore last week to pick up their lead on new reform measures, and then the Vatican asked the bishops not to vote until after the Synod in February. In the press conference following that announcement, Cardinal DiNardo, the president of the USCCB, was asked why the bishops didn't just go ahead and vote on the reforms anyway. He said, rightly, we are Roman Catholic bishops in communion with our Holy Father in Rome, and we're responsible to him. We need to join him in making that act of faith. Today we're gathered at the National University of the Catholic Church to launch our conference series and other programs on this crisis, this initiative, an opportunity for dialogue between the laity and the episcopacy is part of the university's response. 
from these conferences, I think will come more programs and proposals about how we as lay people can support and inform our bishops as they work to heal the current breach of trust. So I want to close by thanking all of you for coming tonight. This is an important step. And, and by asking you now to turn your attention to a short video on the initiative that will provide the framework for Catholic universities' response to this issue. So thank you very much for coming tonight.